four months down, and we're starting to get a great picture of what 2023 it's going to shake out to being like. One of the markets, it came in strong with year-over-year -year appreciation. Another came in at, well, a respectable amount. And then one market, well, it was down, way down. And the market that came in strong, well, that one might just surprise you. And another month, well, another bank failure. We're going to touch on this and what it means for the future of our real estate market. If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market data for the month of April for single-family homes, condos, as well as multifamily properties, then you're in the right place. But let's unpack this crazy market. But first, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a 1,000 houses. Now, one of the state's top agents. If you have any real estate questions, then no, I'm here to help. Let's start with single-family homes. In April of 2023, we saw 2,426 single-family homes sell for an average sales price of $756,000. Now, compared to April of 2022, this actually represents a year-over-year -year decrease in the number of sales by 25.2%. And the average for the first three months of the year was 24.3% decrease in the sales levels. So sales levels are going to continue to be down for another three or four months. So be prepared for that. But we should really start seeing that delta of the year over year sales data start to narrow in the coming months. Should. Compared to April 2022, home prices were up by 1.6% year over year. This was a pretty big pullback from last month's 4.28%, but still a very healthy and sustainable level of appreciation. Doing a year-over-year -year analysis for the first four months of the year, we've seen home prices go up by 2.62% in the state of Massachusetts. So sales were down and prices were up. I feel like we've seen this story before, but let's dive in the numbers a little bit deeper. The 2,426 sales levels of April of 2023 essentially put us to the sales level territory of April of 2009 when 2,352 units sold. In the months past, we've been seeing sales numbers comparative to like 2011, maybe 2012. So this was a little bit of a surprise. We've now seen 22 consecutive months of year-over-year -year sales declines. It's not a pretty looking graph, but in the next three to five months, like I said, I think that's going to change. So why aren't we worried about the housing market and prices if our sales levels are comparative to 2009? It's all tied around inventory levels. In April of 2009, we had 21,971 single-family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. That is nearly six and a half times more homes on the market than we currently have today. Six and a half times. And our inventory actually dipped below the levels of April 2021, making this the second lowest level of inventory available to home buyers in our history. And we aren't very far off of the lowest amount of inventory levels either. At the end of April, we had 3,421 single-family homes on the market, and this is compared to 3,270 in April of 2022. That means year over year, our inventory levels are only 4.6% higher than the record lowest. And that's after a whole year of non-stop rate increases. Now, there are 151 more homes on the market, and I didn't really foresee inventory levels being this tight. It kind of astounds me, quite frankly. It's my belief that these tighter inventory levels help decrease the number of sales activity that we ultimately saw in April. This is why our sales numbers fell a little bit more than expected. The story of the real estate market is, and it's going to continue to be, all about inventory levels. Not sales levels, inventory levels. And not an inventory level comparison to last year, 2021. If you believe that oil prices are going to go down like we saw in 2008, then you need to compare those inventory levels to 2009 and 2010. There will be no housing price correction with inventory levels this low. So what are my thoughts for April in the single family market? The sales levels, well, they were off a little bit, but the inventory getting tighter, that's very surprising. Historically, we should be seeing more houses coming on the market this time of year. This is the time for new inventory, and it's just been a trickle at best. I'm not surprised by the appreciation levels, and I really am not surprised by housing prices going up. It's a trend. I tried to scream this from the rooftop last year and the beginning of this year when all the idiots out there were talking about how housing prices were off their peak levels. It's a trend. We're following the same trend line now. The prices are not jumping as much year over year as they did in the last two years, but they are still increasing. Our housing price peak will get most likely come in June of this year with prices and the number of sales pulling back in the fall. I don't know if the average sales price will appreciate or depreciate next month from a year-over-year -year basis, but what I can predict is the average price will be higher than the $756,000 that we saw this month. So on to the condo market and then the multifamily market. But first, if you're liking hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And I can't tell you 
how much I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. For the month of April in the condo market, we saw 1,198 condos close in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $688,000. Now, I didn't see this one coming. The condo market was actually stronger than the single family market for the month of April. So let's start with the actual number of sales. They were down a whopping 35%. This was a lot higher than the last three month average of 23.6% sales declines. This was a stunning number. And to say the obvious right now, the strength, it wasn't in the sales numbers, but we will get to that in just one second. The sales levels of 1,198 units sold in April of 2023 were equal to the levels of April 2011 when we hit 1,134 units sold. And in case you were wondering, we saw an appreciation rate of 6.7% year over year 2011. And when you look at this chart with a comparison of this year versus 2021 and 2022, you can see how low the inventory levels really are. You can also see how it broke away from the historical trend. So the question becomes, will this decrease in sales be made up for in May? And will there be a late spring flurry of sales activity? Or is it just going to be a low sales level spring market? Okay, so sales were down. But we expected this. What happened with inventory? If sales were down by 35%, then that must mean that inventory was up, right? Inventory at the end of April hit 2,171 units. That means inventory is up by 4.6% compared to April of 2022 when there were 2,075 houses on the market. So we are less than 100 units shy of hitting a record low in inventory levels. Now, the average sales price of $688,000 represented a 2.9% year-over-year gain for the month of April. Not bad. Now, let's take a quick look at the average sales price and compare it to 2021 and 2022. The condo market is being a little less trendy, if you will. January and February were outlier months, with the January being a lot higher than the average, then February falling below that 2022 sales levels. But the March and April sales price data is just falling right in line. Now, if you were me and I was looking at this chart, then I'd have said, well, 2021, it's not really following any trend or at least an obvious one at that. And this is because the condo market, specifically in the big cities like Boston and Worcester, just got slaughtered during COVID. It's a weird year to compare to, but we're still going to compare it because we just never run from data here. So no real issues here. Sales are lower than we really want them to be, but it's not like inventory is growing. So any more sales would create ultimately an even larger imbalance in the marketplace. In other words, I guess it's a good thing that, well, there are less buyers out there. Now onto the multifamily market. Now look, I know, I know, I'm beating a dead horse here when I say this, but the multifamily market is the market that I am most bearish on and the one that I foresee property prices going down for this year. I've said it over and over again, but I feel like it's worth repeating. So yes, I'm still not changing that vote because the April data shows exactly how ugly this multifamily market is. I know I've done this before, but for the new viewers, I just want to do a real quick recap as to why I am down on the multifamily market. Multifamily's main attraction is for investors, and when it comes to investing, it's all about dollars and cents. No one buys a multifamily property to lose money on a monthly carry each month. That would just be dumb. And with the cost of debt, this is exactly what would happen for a lot of these investors. And for the buyers that are looking to buy a multifamily property to have the tenant help pay their mortgage, what is really interesting is that in a lot of these cases, the new homeowner would actually be subsidizing some of the tenant's rent. Basically, for many multifamily properties, the current numbers, they just don't work. Either prices have to go down or interest rates need to go down while rents continue to increase or maybe a little of both of them are all three. In April 2023, there were 306 properties that sold for an average sales price of $652,000. Now, these numbers were a bloodbath all around. In March, it looked like it could be start of something good where we're going to see the multifamily market maybe start clawing out of the hole it has dug in the last five or six months. Turns out that was just an outlier. Year-over-year -year sales were down 44.4%. 44.4%. Sales of the multifamily market were down nearly half compared to April of last year. That's a big number. Meanwhile, prices were down by 6.2% year over year. This means that for the first four months year over year, we've seen sales levels down by 35.5% and prices down by 2.4%. Now let's take a peek at the multifamily inventory levels because as we know, you can't see large price decreases without a big swing of inventory that creates a glut onto the market. And as of the end of March, we had 660 multifamily properties on the market. Inventory levels today are 23.6% below the levels this time last year. This makes for a new historical reference point as the lowest level of inventory in the month of April in history. 
And I've noted this in the past. This all, it makes sense. Sellers aren't getting the price they want. So they just take their property off the market and enjoy that fat return they're, they're getting on a monthly carry. Investors, they don't really have a dying need to sell right now, which will help with helping keep prices elevated and hopefully ensure that there will be no crash in prices. And that is because of the bank failures that we're seeing. It is the regional banks that are facing an uphill battle and, well, ultimately staying alive. It is these regional banks that also provide about 70% of the commercial lending in our country. The liquidity to finance or refinance deals for commercial properties, it's just not there. And this is all happening when you have a large sum of properties that are needing to refinance in the next two years. Now, real quick note on to why they need to refinance. It's because a commercial loan isn't like a residential one. Those loans are good for 10 years while generally being amortized for a 20-year period. So every 10 years, these buildings actually need to refinance their properties. Now, for residential, this all doesn't really matter that much because nearly 77% of the liquidity in the residential market was provided by the government-sponsored entities. Think Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, right? Now, you want to talk about your own personal real estate needs and all of my information is in the description below. I always love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. You can also visit youtuberealestateagent.com and fill out a couple questions, basically your name and your phone number, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about any or all of this market data, then drop me a line in that comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm going to take the time to answer you. Until next time.